Welcome to Fruit Points, a podcast by Latham High Tech Seeds. I'm product manager Steve Sick, and each week I will be interviewing Latham team members throughout our territories. We'll have discussions on agronomy, hot topics in the industry, and things we're seeing across Latham country. Family owned and farm proven for more than 75 years, Latham Seeds is growing strong. Today we're here with John Latham, president of Latham High Tech Seeds. How are you today, John? I'm doing great, Steve. Glad to have you. So can you tell us what does it look like for the Premium Agronomy Agronomy Center and Northern Iowa look like this spring? You know, Northern Iowa has been a little bit behind, but luckily I feel pretty good. The the forecast looks good for the rest of this week and then next week as well. So I think we're going to get caught up in a a hurry. And and just having that forecast gives everybody some hope and we can get, get things going on corn and soybeans. And uh, just that long range looks really good. Um, and then the, the Premier Agronomy Center, yeah, we're really proud of that. We started it a couple of years ago, actually, and then we got kind of interrupted by COVID there. But this last year was the first year we were able to really show it off to our customers and dealers. And, and the Premier Agronomy Center, we're, we're certainly going to show off Latham products, both corn and soybeans and alfalfa. But then also we want to be able to do some studies on different things that are of interest to our customers, whether it be a seed treatment study or a population or a planning date study, all those type of things. And then mix in some some great Latham products and some different things like, you know, planning depth and that kind of thing that we've seen that have really helped our customers uh, get higher yields. So. So, yeah, we really enjoyed doing the Premier Agronomy Center, and and it's something that we can take people through all through the year. And then we have our big field day in the first part of September at Alexander, and we'd love to have everybody there. It's it's a great time. Very good. One of the things you mentioned was a seed treatment area in the Premier Agronomy Center. What would you say to those that have just started planting now uh, or soil conditions are somewhat a little cooler in a lot of areas? We've had some cool nights, cool days. Uh, what would you say on seed treatments and what Latham has to offer? Yeah, I would definitely say seed treatments have paid off, especially the, the last few years and especially if you get in a cold, cold situation. We've seen, you know, a lot of the Agronomies, agronomists, and you know some of the publications out there really are promoting early planting of soybeans. I'm a little more old school. I think you're better off planting when it's fit and then just watching them really pop out of the ground. But if, if you do have a lot of acres and you want to plant early, certainly seed treatment is the way to go. And we've seen, especially years when we've had sun death syndrome, uh, Saltra, we've used a lot of that on our soybeans, and it does a great job on sun death syndrome as well as this nematode. So I would definitely recommend that for for folks. Now we've also got our Soy Shield and Soy Shield Plus, our fungicide and, and insecticides that I that I really recommend as well. But to me, for the for the buck, that Saltro is just a great treatment, and and especially if you're planting early, like we didn't think we were, but I think we are going to be planting a little early now. The way things are looking, yeah. Even though the calendar doesn't says we're doesn't say we're early, it certainly the weather makes it seem like it's early, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure feels like it's early, but it's been windy and and that wind chill, you can really feel it right now. So, yeah, I would agree. What would you say about the percentage of corn and soybeans planted in northern Iowa? I would say probably 20 percent of the corn and maybe 10 percent of the soybeans, if I just had to guess. Now, I think our friends in central Iowa are are a lot further along than that. Yeah, I think we're we're a little bit behind, but I think we're going to catch up. It's amazing with the equipment out there. What how fast guys can get caught up. I've seen some stuff that's been planted in the ground for a little over a week now, and it's it's not out of the ground. Uh, it's barely swollen in the ground. So, yes, I agree with you. I think we're a ways away from emergence on some of that, and I think the things that are planted now will do a good job of catching up really fast. Yeah, it's amazing what some heat can do. You get the soil temperatures a little, little warmer and some sunshine this week, and, man, things pop out of the ground. And to me, I'd rather have it pop out of the ground rather than sitting there in cold soil. And then, you know, you got issues with diseases and things. One of the other things you mentioned about the Premier Agronomy Center is, you know, population studies, the field day coming up, you know, the showcase that we have there at, at Alexander. Can you just walk us through maybe a little bit more of what's included in that site? Yeah, well, our, our agronomy team has planted all sorts of different dates and trying to get the optimum date for planting. 
and it seems like it's a mixed bag, you know, depending on on the year and and uh, what the the weather conditions were. But that's always something we're looking at. Uh, we do uh, depth of planting to see what works. And boy, to us, the the deeper the better. If you can get it two to two and a half inches on corn and and uh, close to that on soybeans, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot better opportunity. Then if you plant shallow is, is what the data showed to us. And it was pretty, pretty convincing this last year. So those kind of those kind of things are really important. And then we've seen um, guys on soybeans have kind of cut back on the soybean population over the last few years and, and are still getting great yields. And the great thing about soybeans, is that they're very adaptable. We're on corn. They're ramping it up a little bit, trying to maximize that population so they can can really get some big yields. So just looking at different trends like that and trying to put some data behind it to to make sure uh you know we're giving the best information possible for our customers well that's a good point uh, that's one thing you don't often hear from a seedsman is cutting soybean populations you cut soybean populations obviously you decrease sales a little bit but i agree i mean today's soybean varieties are well adapted to lower populations than what we've ever seen before in the past one of the things you'd mentioned earlier, too, was about planting seed depth. Just use a credit card. Uh, pretty much everybody carries one, and, and a credit card depth is a real good measure. If you're down there at that credit card depth, I think you're going to be in great shape. Yeah, it's a great way to remember it, too. And you mentioned uh, the population, just showing how old I am. You know, I started back in the early 90s. I, and uh, everybody was buying drills back then, and and they were planting at two hundred forty thousand, you know, on soybeans with these drills. And man, we've we've come a long way since then. Now we're really placing the, the beans in a better spot. And I think you know we had issues like white mold when we planted so heavy back then. And so, you know, from a seedsman, it's it <laughs> it hurts because we don't sell quite as much as we used to, but. But certainly it's it's what's best for the customer. And I think they can maximize yield even with with less population. What about putting quality in a bag when you talk about, you know, you used to planting 200, 220,000? Uh, how much difference does it make now with quality in a bag? It's, it's really important. It's something we've taken a lot of pride in over the years. Going back to my grandfather's days is is really uh, we, you know all of our seed comes in at once at, at harvest time and is inspected by hand and we really can put out a premium product we've got greg jakes our plant manager who's been with us for uh well i shouldn't say but uh, but a lot of years <laughs> and, and does a great job and his whole team does a great job they're very conscientious and and so we we're able to put out really clean whole beans and our customers you know were noted for that in the industry and you know you certainly don't want a bunch of sticks or dirt or anything in those beans when you're when you're planting and you're paying you know a good premium for them so that's one thing we take a lot of pride in and, and i'm proud of our whole team for what we're known for is quality no one other thing on planting you know kind of we get into a lot of iowa's rotational crops rotating pink corn and soybeans you seeing anything uh with extended diapause more rootworm pressure anything along that lines we are seeing some more extended diapause and, and certainly heavy rootworm pressure. We've got a lot of our customers that are planting a lot of corn on corn, and so and they're they're definitely seeing you know more rootworm pressure than ever. And so we're we're excited about uh, new SmartStacks Pro and having that RNAi technology in it, especially if you've got rootworm issues. Um, also, in the future, we'll have the VT4 coming out with the RNAi, but that's not if you that's not for as heavy a pressure of rootworm as what the SmartStacks Pro and the SmartStacks Pro is in our lineup right now. You can buy it right now. It's certainly not cheap, but it's but it's worth it to be able to have that protection against rootworm and, and it's, it maybe can save you a, a spraying trip or two later on in the season as well. So but excellent technology and we're proud to to uh, have some great Latham products with that technology in it. Will we be able to see Smart Stacks Pro and VT4s at the Premier Agronomy Center? Yes, you will. Yep, you'll see uh, Smart Stacks Pro at, at a lot of different our dealers' plots as well. But the VT4 will have at Alexander, and we're certainly testing a lot of those this year. And I think we'll have have a good mix of them for this next year. But right now, we're testing them in in our lineup and, and seeing how they work. We want to make sure that they're the right fit for our customers. And so right now, if you've got real one pressure, the SmartStacks Pro is, is the way to go. 
and then we'll see how the, the VT4 goes. And, but I'm excited to have the options that we do have. Hey, you bring, you bring up a good point, John, in my opinion, on, you know, trialing. Uh, obviously, we have a great site there at Alexander with our Premier Agronomy Center. And you also brought up, too, about showcase plots throughout the, the territory, and especially in Iowa as well. You know, what kind of emphasis do we at Latham put on to Premier Showcase of Plots? Yeah, well, we've got a lot of our of our dealers that have the showcase plots and have a lot of the newest newest products to look at and newest technology. And then we also have our own internal uh, research plots where we've got all over Minnesota, North and South Dakota, Iowa, out in Nebraska, Wisconsin, and a little bit of Illinois. So we we really take a lot of pride in in our research, and that goes back to uh, my dad's days. He was a research guy, and so. We wanted to make sure that all of our products, they really work best in our area. And that's that's what we're looking for in a product is something maybe that may work just in Northwest Iowa, where a bigger company wouldn't want it because it doesn't go all the way across the country. But but it's a product that works really well for us. And so that's been a real niche for us. And that's why our customers like our products uh, so well. Yeah, earlier you mentioned about, you know, being old school and and I'm the same way. I think a lot of growers like to have that touch, feel and see experience with the products that we can provide at Latham that, that a lot of companies and some other companies don't provide. I like to look at data as well, but at the end of the day, you want to be able to see that product and and be comfortable that it's got good roots and stalks and, you know, it's it's uh got a lot of yield potential and you can see that a lot of times. So it's a great opportunity to be able to see some of the new products that we have. Certainly we've got some old standbys that, that do really well, but for those new products that you want to make sure that they're going to be the right fit on your farm. And so, yeah, it's, it's really important to not only have them in data, but be able to have, be able to showcase them and be able to see them for yourself. It's a unique position that, that we're in at Latham compared to a lot of other companies. I think we got an opportunity to have a have an excellent crop this year. It sounds like from everything I've heard, the soil is working up well. And so, um, you know, some years we feel like we get rushed and feel off to mud things in. And man, if that soil is fit and the temperature is right, it's a great start to getting a really high end yield. So, so, you know, knock on wood, but so far it looks like we've got a real opportunity to do that. Yeah, just to reiterate on what John said, it's it's an excellent point to end on is that make sure your soil conditions are optimal for planting. The temperatures can be a little cooler. That's not a problem. We know we're going to warm up, but just make sure that soil type and condition is all ready to go. No heavy, wet soils, no sidewall compaction, planter depth. Make sure everything's set and you'll be off to a great spring with Latham hybrids. Let's keep it keep it rolling. <laughs> And with that, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Proof Points. Thanks for tuning in and have a great week. Bye.